Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of A Couple of Creatives. We got some special guests on this week's episode. Would those special guests like to say hello? I would. It is your boy, John Hill, <laughs> a.k.a. John Hill, here with... <laughs> Sarah Dietschy rhymes with Peachy. Oh, heck yeah. We are super stoked to have these guys on the podcast today. So why don't we just jump right into those questions right now? Lizzie, take it away. Nope. Okay. So for everyone or everyone and anyone who may not know you guys, could you just give everybody like a brief intro, who you are, what you do, what your very different niches are on YouTube? Well, John Hill, being my voice, I have a very feminine voice. So I have to make sure that people know it's John Hill and not Sarah <laughs> um, uh, I guess, yeah, the best way to explain is I'm, I'm a professional skateboarder and a YouTuber. So I make videos Urbay, on any social media, actually. And that's about it. And I skateboard a lot. And Sarah does the same. <laughs> John's a professional skateboarder. I feel like I, you skate, you said you skateboard a lot. You did not say pro. So you're, did he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you guys should like intro each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, my name is Sarah Dietrich. I'm Peachy. I make YouTube videos around tech and creativity and I live in New York city. And thank you for having us on the podcast. Thank you guys for mm. saying yes to being on the podcast. Oh, of course. You guys are in a relationship. We have been married for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been together for over two years. Boyfriend and girlfriend. We're getting close to three. BFGF. That's been like Does two, it feel longer? <laughs> two in a couple months. Real Okay, quick question. Just like a sidebar. Like, do you guys know the day that you met? Yeah. Oh, yes. It was February 4th. And it was just such a nice day in California. Am I off? He's off. He's off. He's oh. shaking her head. He's off. <laughs> what day is it? Day so we met. met. And we have we, the YouTube videos to show yeah, what day we met. I, we met December 2nd, I think, okay. or something. Because I remember the YouTube videos. Because we mm -hmm. each made a vlog of our first days hanging out with each other. Oh, you can go back to it and watch it It now. was a collab. Yeah, it was amazing. We did a collab in California. I hit her up and was like, what's up, hotness? And that's usually how I approach anybody so, that I want to collab with. You like can, Chris you can well. find yeah. love on YouTube, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And But our official anniversary is February 7th. Right. Remember, it's one week before Valentine's Day. Of course, I know that off so, the top of my head easily. Is that when you had the talk? <laughs> that's when I was like, what is it? The, we're boyfriend, girlfriend, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, it was yeah. kind of, yeah, I guess we didn't. It was weird. I feel like we didn't talk about it for like three weeks after we were like dating. We didn't say anything about it, like being official. We're like, oh, do we? I was the we one. We never talked it about it. So don't really? even. Yeah, Chris you guys just. We weren't even probably dating at this point. No. You don't even know it. No, he just <laughs> proposed out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, going from like Lizzie and I, when we first like decided, uh, I think I decided that we were boyfriend and girlfriend. I just introduced her as my girlfriend to like our neighbors. That's like, she was over, and then our neighbors opened the door, and I was like, oh, this is my girlfriend, Lizzie. And she like looked up, and she's like, Cool, it's happening now, I guess. <laughs> That's amazing. And then I told you about that later, and you had no recollection of doing that whatsoever. That so and I was like, yeah, you know, the day you just introduced me as your girlfriend, Chris is like, what? I did that? I feel like Chris and I are going to have a lot of parallels, and you guys are going to have a lot of parallels, because just us talking. <laughs> yeah. It's because I was the same way. I was like, so this is like boyfriend, girlfriend. We're just going to make this a thing. Because well, we were like in the car in like Wyoming or something. Where right. were we? And the power was out, and like it was a fun trip. Very romantic atmosphere. I mean, yes. it was like us cut it up in the cold weather and we're like let's just date but i think like to <laughs> let's me, just date <laughs> we, to me we were dating before we even met i saw your youtube videos i was like dude this girl be, mm, mm. and then in my head we were already dating okay you creep uh, plans worked out perfectly <laughs> so do you think actually this is going back to something i wanted to ask you do you think because you guys were you know both involved in the youtube space you're both hardworking people was that one of the main factors and why you you know you thought this would work do you want to tell the story of when we first, first met, how you found me or like how you saw me? In, how I saw you? Like on Venice Wolf Boulevard, we met up for lunch. Yeah. What if about I, it? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yes. Okay. So <laughs> the story came. Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, truly I had never met anyone even slightly like me in any measure at all. Like I never met someone how like as intense as I was with work ethic and stuff. And I've always been kind of like picked on about it where it was like, dude, Calm down, relax, yep. stop working so much. And then meeting Sarah, it was the first time I ever met anyone. I said that, so Sarah. <laughs> meeting Sarah, 
it was the first time I've ever seen anyone like that because as I was pulling up to the restaurant to like collab with her and meet her and stuff, she was on her computer, on her like carry on luggage, having to upload a video real quick. And it's like, so good to meet you. And she was like, one second and like had to go down and like finish this thing. But she was like introducing herself as she was uploading a video. <laughs> and I was like, this is the sexiest <laughs> moment <laughs> of my life. You're like, she's the one yeah, for me. Yeah, she's the one. <laughs> that's, that's when I was uploading Monday through Friday. Right. So I hated my life. Um, but <laughs> oh but the only thing that mattered was YouTube videos. Yep. True. Yep. Agreed. <laughs> Love it first upload and site. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it was it was like very well. It was very cool too, especially because I, I you could already see the work ethic online. I mean, you see how many videos she was uploading and what she was yep. doing, and it was like, yeah. I mean, in every way, it was like we create similar kind of content. We're both clearly really passionate about these worlds, and um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I knew we'd at least get along really well, and like I was like, clearly we're gonna be really good friends. I mean, this is like this girl's like me. This is cool, but yeah, I mean, it just got yeah. I don't know. And like the first day we hung out, we were both kind of like slightly infatuated. Yeah. So, yeah. Were you living in California at the time? I was. Yeah. yeah. And then how did that conversation come for like you now moving your body across America to live in New York? Do you remember how it started? So you had always wanted to live in New York, I feel like at one point in I your did. life. Yeah. yeah. I know. I always did. That. I came here when I was in eighth grade and I was like, I'm moving to New York one day, but Skateboarding, obviously, if you want to pursue that in any way, California is the spot to go to, period. And I remember I was just coming home from a trip and I was on the phone with him, like an Uber on my way back. And he was still in L.A. I was in New York and we were seeing each other like every other month. Like I would go to L.A. for three weeks. And it was funny. We moved very fast because it was like we were going to YouTube conferences and we were um, because of long distance. We would just like stay at each other's apartments and like hotels together and stuff. Um within the first like two or three months, I feel like. Yeah, we kind of jumped right into it. We were, I mean, yeah, it was like we were switching off months. Yeah. So it was a good, I mean, it was good. Cause like, oh, I loved the West Coast. It was fun, but I didn't want to put any pressure on anything. Um, but secretly, I don't want to move to LA. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, I was waiting for him to make that decision. But it was funny cause when you did, it kind of freaked me out because, you know, I've had two boyfriends in my life and he's really the only serious one I've had. So when he, on the phone, you were the one like, I should just move to New York. And I was like, oh yeah. Oh, what does that mean? So uh, we're gonna live together? Cause this is, at this point we were together for seven months or something, mm, seven, yeah. eight months. Yeah. And so I remember hesitating in the beginning. And then I remember you getting really defensive. And then I was like, wait, 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 no, 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 no. Like, obviously I want this. You just gotta, I just gotta like process all this because this Big isn't commitment. It, yeah it, yeah 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 and i'm like really overly sensitive so like the second that something might not work i get very instead of fighting for it i'm the opposite okay but that's chris though <laughs> oh yeah, yeah i'm very sensitive as well yeah yeah so like so with our thing if, if she's like okay yeah uh if she seems kind of thing i'm like oh never mind don't worry about it it's okay i guess <laughs> it, it's fine yeah i'll, I'll be joking. here alone forever yeah. it's fine <laughs> which i'm like no 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 because no, i love how things are going right now let me just like uh decompress and figure out what this is going to be like and like because instantly my brain went to like I'm going to have to have this conversation with my mom and my dad and then my grandparents and then you know it's there's like, a lot oh, to it. it there's so much to it because essentially it's like oh you're shacking up yeah like there's no wedding ring and you're going to live together and that's still very taboo mm -hmm. well we literally didn't live together technically until this fall what? No Which not a lot of people know because... And how long have y'all been together? Seven years. Oh my gosh, we moved too fast, baby. And seven months. <laughs> it was... Well, I was very much like, I wanted Chris to live by himself like I wanted Chris to live on his own he was saving tons of money living at home which is why he stayed so long and also I had an apartment so he could just come and you basically stayed there like you know six to you know six days out of the seven day week yeah. so it was basically like we were living together at an apartment that was mine mm -hmm. and I decided what happened there and what went up on the walls and that kind of thing I mean, there's a lot of context too. Like I had a car, so being able to drive everywhere was like really easy. So between the two of us, we had technically a home, we had a vehicle to get around, we had a, a business that we were running together. So there's a lot of context that goes into it. And I was like primed by my family to like buy mm. and like not rent. And that's fine. You know what I mean? Like both sides are of value. So I had 
purchased a property and then rented that and then was saving up money so that we could hopefully buy a place one day. And that was the big thing. It was like, we basically just got, got engaged, bought a home. So like that was our story over a Big long moves. time. <laughs> I can't believe you guys bought a home. That's insane. Yeah, it's a little Full crazy. Adults. Yeah, but I, I don't feel, feel like, like one. Because <laughs> uh, the point, because we were like traveling together so much. And because when I, whenever I thought about the alternative of just not living together, that but was being worse. the same. Yeah, I'm like, mm-hmm. wait, that sounds awful. Um, yeah. Because we're already working so much that you know, I want to spend every waking moment not working with you. And so that would have just made it more complex, I feel like. And we don't run a business together. Yeah. It's in the same field, but yeah. we do our own things. So it was one of those things where, like, obviously we want to hang out as much as possible. Yeah. So it just made sense. Yeah, and I also clearly got the vibe right away that she was way more attached to New York than I was to anything because in this three years before I had met her, I, I was moving every six months. Yeah. So Long Beach, Cincinnati, California, somewhere else she's just used to this <laughs> yeah i was moving every six months so the new york thing the, the reason i brought it up so nonchalantly was like oh i'm in new york that's no yeah. problem because like i'm literally moving all the time and like, that's I, the would, I was gonna end up there anyways at some point totally so. yeah absolutely and then, yeah because i will say when we first started dating mm-hmm. or we were like two months into the re- two or three months into the relationship he bought not bought he rented this beautiful expensive massive ass um uh culver city apartment sure did and I was like, <laughs> so that Ballin. that was like kind of a thing. Like, oh, he's like, least though, yeah. I mean, it was only six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought, I didn't know. and I wasn't. I mean, we. I mean, that was what four months into it. So we. That would have been even stranger for me at that time when I got that apartment because I had to get a different apartment because of some crazy sure. ordeal we dealt, dealt I'm with. Pretty sure it was a one year lease, by the way, because I remember. I remember, oh, it was, but I got yeah. out early. But I, I had to get that apartment right away because of something I was dealing with. I, I basically had that. Yeah, there was basically like this, like gang coming after me in long beach so anyways this so is I, a whole other podcast episode. yeah totally totally so so basically i have I'm like so interested though i know i had like two days to move and i basically oh was like God. yeah and, and i i went to a starbucks and i was just sitting there like i don't have a place to live and i can't go back to my place and i look up the street and see a sign that just says like for rent and it didn't matter what the place was i went right in there and i was like can i rent a spot right now and i moved in two days later or the next day or something like that it was an awesome <laughs> It was, but it happened to be a really cool apartment in a city that was like yeah. far enough away for me to feel comfortable. Um, but yeah, so I moved into that right away. And then I was like, I'll just get out of the lease early. But getting out of the lease early well, cost my, me so in much brain, money. In my brain, because that was like, oh, well, he's going to be there for another year. So I guess we're just going to do this long distance thing for a year. So that's why the New York thing shocked me, too. Uh, but I'm glad it happened. Meanwhile, John's just, just trying to get away from this gang. And Sarah's exactly. Like, I guess you can come to New York. Exactly. Uh, which is also scary because I was like, oh, I was like, dude, Sarah's going to see like the real me who always seems to fall into these situations. Or like, I'm like, my life is being threatened and stuff. And I'm like, oh, how do I get out of here? I never thought the podcast was going to end up here today. <laughs> when I woke up this morning, absolutely not. Yeah. So, so you <laughs> came to New York. Mm-hmm. Things are going well. You know, you're, you're here three years later. You still love each other. Seriously. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. <laughs> so this uh so when you guys you both had your separate channels at what point like was it a difficult decision to start like integrating each other into each other's content like were you nervous about telling your online audience that like you were in a relationship for fear that you know everybody's watching what if it doesn't work out For me not at all because I think I think I was way more transparent with my audience because I was uploading a vlog every day for like two years. So I shared every single detail of my life and I just totally didn't care at a certain point. And I also like uh, liked the idea of being like, I'm so transparent. I don't care if anyone knows anything about me. And I thought that was cool. So I was like excited about it. I'm like, oh, this is good content. Yeah, Yeah, we're dating now and we're going to love this. (laughs) It was kind of like click bake for a while. I mean, I used it at the opportune times, you know, because... uh, when I was more vlogging, I mean, my YouTube channel has very shifted towards a more focused approach, how I started my channel, with just tech stuff and creativity stuff. But when I was vlogging, I did fall more into that kind of like clickbaity um, storytelling, sto- you know, telling your life. So there was definitely a, uh, a theme of I would always hang out with guys. So I was always clickbaiting my guy friends like Sam mm-hmm. Sheffer, Eric Conover, like Eric was out of an apartment for a week. So he literally stayed on my couch at my old apartment. So of course I made smart. <laughs> I, of course I made a video that was like 
uh, he's moving in or something. <laughs> and so I knew, so I knew Love that it. that like worked in previous, but everyone was so used to the, the bait and switch that I was like, Oh, yeah. this is going to be so fun. Cause this is like a real no, it's thing. Real. <laughs> so I did that for a little bit. And then, um, you go through these things where like just the internet sucks and it kind of yeah. makes you the things that you hold closely to you. You don't want to give the internet that. So now yeah. I've like, way dialed it back to where even yeah it's just like that's why I didn't post an apartment tour until like we're moving because I don't want people to comment on the things that like I love in life because I'm like I know I'm for sure about this you guys do not get to have a say I'm that way now too yeah Yeah, I'm definitely way less transparent I I try not to share almost any personal detail anymore just because yeah after a while too if people feel betrayed by you in some way they're going to use all this like information that you've given them sort of against you and just like yeah blow your spot up because of it yeah well, when we got engaged, uh, I think everyone was expecting us to film it, put up a video about it, have some big ex- explanation, and we didn't do that. We did not videotape it at all, and that was because, I think I actually told you, I was like, if and when this happens, please don't film it, and let's not post it anywhere, because I don't want to remember it any other way than how I remember it. <laughs> It's also nostalgic too. I think the way that you view it in your mind is always like more beautiful than maybe the actual moment was. So I think number one, we wanted a moment just for us. And like, that's not something we wanted to share. We also, for, for that specific thing, you know, there's certain things in our lives that we'll capitalize off of, or they seem clickbait. I was like, nope, not this time. And the funny thing is it almost went the complete opposite. We might've like filmed everything and done this whole thing. And it was like a hard nothing we have a single polaroid photo from that day wow. and that's the only thing and the rest is just a moment for us well your perception of any event is going to shift if there's like an audience involved so you're going to remember that event how amazing it was but if everybody gets to see it you're going to remember how you feel looking at the comments about yeah. the situation as well so exactly this beautiful moment yeah. everyone's opinions is involved in your head and it's not exactly worth it. and i don't cry what? <laughs> nice. So they I would like be that. like, uh, I was why worried about people such a biatch. Yeah, She's I was worried crying. about be- people yeah, being yeah, critical yeah. of that, and I didn't want them to ruin it for me because I'm like, that's just how I am. I was so surprised, but I didn't cry. Yeah. On the other hand, I bawled my eyes out. I could I, see that. Okay. Side note. For anyone listening that's like down to like do a proposal, like down uh, when they're going to do a proposal, <laughs> like true. write some stuff down because I had this whole like, I'll speak from the heart and that just went to shit. It well, was so it. bad. Were you nervous? I was nervous and then I was crying and I was like bubbling my way through it. I was like, you're my fr- best friend, friend was that's best and I have like, oh, we're together and that's wow, special. <laughs> Like it was just, she it was, was like, a, let's try this it was later. a mess. And then Lizzie's response. Can we say that? Yeah. So then Chris goes and I'm just staring at him like this, like eyes wide open, like, oh, this is happening right now. I haven't said a word. And Chris is like, you haven't said anything. And I was like, oh, sorry, I do. I mean, I will. I mean, yeah, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't just yes. I said, I do. I will. Yeah. So now. Yeah. For the rest, everything that happens, like Chris constantly makes fun makes fun of me. He's like, oh, so do you want to have this for dinner? And I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. He goes, I do, I will, yeah. <laughs> I was like, we're going to put that on a shirt one day. <laughs> yeah. That makes for a way better story than just like, oh my God, I do. Like that's a way better story. Well, yeah, because it's, it's fun to look back at our videos um, because we really did document the beginning and like having those first two vlogs, like both of our perspectives is really fun to have. So there is, um, there is something to say about filming stuff and like capturing the moment, but definitely having a balance and, you know, just cause you film it doesn't mean you have to post it everywhere. Totally. And how tactical, how tactical I was with getting you to like me. In the first vlog. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So I'm a very straightforward person. I like tell it like it is. Me too, man. <laughs> so his way of, you know, we hung out for like two days and then I had to go back to New York. And in my brain, I'm like, 
Okay, that was more than just hanging out as friends. Like, this is new. I haven't felt like this in a while. What about in the first vlog? There's literally a clip of me and her just skating by, and I'm vlogging, and we're, like, laughing hysterically, and some lady's just like, you guys love each other! Just cool. out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. And then we're Aww. like, and I, of course, I left it in the vlog, because I'm like, yeah. I want her to think Oh, that's that so cool. So I wish we could tell that lady now, be like, you had no idea. <laughs> I know. So John made this, like, hella romantic vlog and i was like, <laughs> like yeah, i don't think I you would make this about anyone well, so it was, it was a montage in the middle where yeah basically like it was like a normal vlog but then the montage of like sarah being out and about shooting or whatever was like this super acoustic indie song and just like oh my god like all like but, yeah not so subtle he, but but in the text messages he was like so normal there was really no flirting at all but he would go into the comments of his of his youtube video when people are like oh i so ship this or like sarah's awesome he would comment to those comments like doing the flirting to those comments instead of me so, so i was like, just so like is you, this for the views he or would like respond yeah he would respond like oh yeah you're so right she's amazing or just stuff like that and i was like so confused like why are you taking advantage of me <laughs> Well, it's just a tactical approach to get her to fall in love with me, which there you go. <laughs> worked. So were you just confused, though? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, because I, you know, I just wanted to have a conversation and to hear the words out of his mouth like, oh, yeah, I like you, like you or let's mm -hmm. go on a date. I just wanted you, you know, needed something. I firm. needed those like trigger words or something. Right. Well, that, OK, yeah, maybe. But Sarah <laughs> is extremely intimidating. Like even at the time, though, she she acts like she's. No, she, when I met her, she was like very stern, let's get work done, blah, blah, blah. But she was like flirty with me in a sense, but she didn't put her guard down at all really the first day until the very end after we were like done filming, we sat in the car and we were both kind of relaxed. But she was like, she was on all day. So I felt like she was inaccessible. Mm -hmm. So in the comments, that was like my way to access her. But then even when we talked on the phone and I found out that she liked me a little bit in some weird way, she wasn't, she wasn't like straightforward with it either though. I mean, you were like, the, the way that she implied was basically saying like, oh, uh, she was like, you should come to New York. That'd be really fun. And then oh, she was. It was in our text messages, though. Right. So I did give you a hint before our first phone call. Totally. So, I, so this is her being straightforward was being like, which I guess it kind of is. But she said um, she was like, Eric Conover. Uh, she was like, you can't stay at my apartment. And I was like, oh, that's fine. And she was like, I know I've let people in the past because she probably assumed that I, I'd seen videos of like Eric Conover staying or something. She was like, but. Uh, those are my friends or something like that. I, I that said, mm -hmm. yeah, those are just my friends. And I feel like you're something different. And I felt like uh, that was, you were not, no, no, I, no, no, no. She, she said literally just something like, she was like, oh, she was like, well, I let friends stay on the couch. So she's I was trying the, to be clear. Right. So the interpretation was that she was either I saying, get, I get that, you're yeah. not homie enough or I like you oh, more than homie. I get what, no. oh my gosh. It was okay. It was pretty clear, but <laughs> darn text me, messages. Ho hold on. So here, this first conversation we had on the phone, okay? So the first conversation we ever had on the phone, I was looking just for something small from him, like the word date or so like, I like, know. okay? John, chill. This, this, was his, this was his move, okay? Instead of just saying something chill, he goes, oh, yeah. That's actually really embarrassing. He goes, yeah, I mean, we should go to Paris or something. Like, we could just vlog together and go to Paris. And I was like, oh my God. what? <laughs> Babe. Yeah, I just did so. I was, yeah, the YouTube know. version of let's run away together. Yeah. Is to let's me, go to Paris and vlog we had, we or had something. We only hung out for literally two days. That truly seemed like an easier conversation to me than, do you think we have like a future together? It seemed easier to say, we should go to Paris together. And vlog. So, and vlog. <laughs> so that's when I was like, okay. That's a little bit too fast for me, John, but I'm glad to know that you think this is more than like a friendship, it sounds like. So maybe you should come visit New York. And that's how you visited New York the next month. Yeah, but even when that happened, I remember like I, I was, it was like the first time in a long time I'd been giddy about something. But when she sent that text, I was just like, oh, you can't stay because uh, Eric's a friend, blah, blah, blah. I did interpret to like, wait, she thinks I'm more than a friend. And I remember like being giddy enough to stand up. I was at a Starbucks and go outside and like walk around and be like, this is crazy. Am I, well, and then I like called a friend named Dave Tool, uh, and Dave even told me he had a crush on Sarah, like from watching her videos, <laughs> which is really funny. But I, I told him I was like, dude, like I think Sarah Dichie like likes me or has a crush on me. He's like, oh, explain. So I explained the situation. He's yeah. like, oh, okay. 
he goes in her YouTube videos and watches the videos and then he calls me back later and he's like, dude, I found this video where she basically talked about not having a boyfriend, not being in a relationship, but she basically said that she has a lot of guy friends and that's what she does. So you're the homie. I want you to be safe, but I'm just saying, I think she's just, oh, I, I think you're just the homie. Ideas. I think you're the homie. And like Dave told me that at the beginning and I was she's like, you're right. In your head, though. Yeah. And I think that's why I was so cautious moving forward. Cause I was like, Oh, I don't want to be like the delusional idiot. Who's like, do we have something? And she's like, no, I'm just really nice to guys. So, do you guys take a lot of your friends' opinions to heart when you're like approaching a relationship at the beginning? Usually no, but this dude is like a dad to me. Yeah. But I mean, other friends I would ignore. There's probably two or three people I'd be like, okay, I'll listen to you. But yeah. Sarah, I don't know if you have friends. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> um, it was more like a battle with myself because I had no idea what... I had no idea the dynamics, what it was supposed to be, what I was supposed to feel like. Cause for so long I had just been like alone and focused on work. So, I, so sad. I know, but <laughs> like truthfully, yeah. I mean, I had like little crushes and maybe one or two dates in college, but like truthfully, um, I really forgot what it was to like navigate the whole thing and, um, what we were talking about yesterday I didn't understand like what my love languages were so because he wasn't um like more physical with me or like reaching for my hand or like I remember we walked um when we were walking throughout Central Park he was still like six inches away from me and I was like screw this oh and I like grabbed his arm and I could tell he was like oh but I was waiting for him to do that to me. I and so to I do similar things. So I was very, <laughs> I was very confused with that first New York trip. He wasn't giving me anything. So mm -hmm. I was like, ah, oh, does he like me? What is this? Well, and I think traditionally we're used to guys being really touchy yeah. and you assume like there's a lot of ways to pick up whether a guy likes you or not. Yeah. But then clearly we've just picked such nice guys that they're the, you know, the exception to the rule. Yes. But similar story. So this was like Chris is in my second or third date ever. And he's like, let's watch a movie. So, you know, like code word, watch a movie. Do I really didn't think we we're going to watch a movie. <laughs> I drove all the way to his house, his parents' house in Aurora, which for context for everyone is, was like a solid half hour from where I was. It's yeah, like north of the city, 45 minutes. Yeah, it's not in Toronto anymore. And so I get there and I sit down on the far right end of the couch next to the armrest thinking he's going to plop down right beside me. I've made this very easy for him now. He sits on the far opposite end of the couch, oh puts on his glasses, nice turns on the movie, and he's like, this is going to be a great show. And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> doesn't inch closer to me at all. I go home, and I'm like, he doesn't like me. But then I get this text like, had a great time. Can't wait to see you again. I'm like, I am so confused. <laughs> no, because we watched Into the Wild, and then we sat and talked about the movie afterwards. Yeah. And like right. talked about life. And I was just like, I, I always came from like this background where I just didn't make a move until like the third day. Like, you know, when some people would be like, they would make it on the first or second. Like I literally probably wouldn't touch her arm until the fourth date. It's like, and it was just cause I was just like wanted to hang out. <laughs> well, it okay. So our first movie hangout. We were literally like on the couch, laid out under a blanket. It was New Year's Eve. We were going to go hang out with people on like like a rooftop. But instead, we decided to stay in, watch a movie, which it was actually a really bad what movie to signs? watch. Because it was, it was I remember, um, I was like, we're, we're going through the movies. Um, and I was like, oh, just a classic chick flick, like 16 Candles. I remember loving that movie. Yeah. But then we watch it and it, it has it's really hard to watch it now. <laughs> okay, it's very hard to watch it, but it also has like the most racist Asian character in it ever. So I'm sitting there being like, yeah. "Oh my god." Well, it was awkward for me because it's I was sexist, like, "Sexist, it's racist." Obviously, it's in no everything. way do I care, but I could tell every time there'd be like an Asian moment, I'm like, "Come on," because she's gonna look over and feel uncomfortable, and like it's clearly not uncomfortable. But I could see her being like. Like, like, what did I do? Why did I play this God. movie? It's not helping me put the moves on. Oh, and so yeah. unbelievably raunchy in the sexist way. Like, yeah. It, it's yeah. gnarly. It's like, hard. Course, it's yeah. still, yeah, it I get it. It's a classic. A movie, like, I've watch. I still watch it, but there are yeah. times, it's like, even when you watch Friends now, you're a little bit like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so, and midnight struck and nothing happened. So we finished the movie. It was like 1245. And I was like, 
let's go get a dollar slice or something. And then we had our first kiss. That was basically Sarah kissing me. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly. What were you thinking though? <laughs> so Sarah was disappointed. Were you just nervous or did you just like. Just nervous. Okay. I, I think with those situations, like I want to just be like, well, that's just not my love language. I'm not really touchy. I just want to get to know. I'm just truly like nervous yeah. and scared. Yeah, and I'm fair. like, oh my God. That's so know. fair. At that point, that was probably our fifth day ever to hang out with each other. And so we had so much more learning to do on like yeah. who we are as humans. Well, the next week was well, yeah. very, 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 very intense because I mean, you probably talked about this before, but there was like a moment where we decided not to date and like yeah. that basically. So our conversation of talking about not dating because we were talking about like we our ourselves sick. We literally got sick. So we, yeah. we talked about like our views and like what we wanted. And by that point we were like clearly really, really, really into each other where we were talking about like our future together. Like we went all the way down the rabbit hole yeah. really quickly. And we, we basically decided at the end of the day not to date. And like the next day, we were both extremely sick. It makes like me, I like it makes my stomach hurt. I know, like I I like literally couldn't get out of bed, and I was like, dude, I was like, I think I'm dying in New York, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and like and and I had basically just given up. And I called that dude. It's funny because I talked to that guy who was just like, oh, she's into the blah blah, and I was like, yeah, I was like, we're actually not gonna date blah blah, and he's like, no way, dude, that sucks. I'm like, like, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> Yeah, right. He was like, cool, what's her number? Say, I will say because he was so out of his element in New York and I didn't learn more about him until, you know, the, the future hangs that like he is so not the same human as me where he can just go into situations and automatically feel comfortable. But the the thing that changed it was BNH had us and like a few other YouTubers come over to BNH when they had closed it and just skate around. So I was like, oh, this will be a fun video. And like, so we just went as like, okay, you know what? We're stressed out, but let's go and have fun. And it wasn't until then he was like being himself. He was skating. He was doing all these tricks. Everyone was like, oh, dude, you're sick, bro. And then <laughs> that's, that's when I was like, oh yeah, I am attracted to him. Yeah. He's, he, you know, seeing him in his element was cool. Yeah. So I was like, but then we, yeah, went home and I was like, you know, we should just, we should be together. Yeah. I mean, well, that, that's, <laughs> Forget the, all that other stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the funny thing. One, one thing, reason I was excited to meet Sarah and hang out with Sarah is because I was so like, oh my God, I love what she does. The, like all the people she gets to hang out with, the world that she's a part of is so cool and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I mean, me trying to be in her element out of my element was probably like the most unattractive quality of me because I was just um, so insecure about it. And yeah. like I would sit there quiet and when I would hang out with her people, I would like didn't know what to say or do because I'm like, well, I'm not a part of this world. I'm not allowed to talk yet. Yeah. Like I got to like earn the conversation. But yeah, I mean, just skating around in that place was like, yeah, I remember feeling too like like while skating there, I remember not caring about anything too. That was like the biggest change for me was being like, oh, I don't care about any of this nonsense of hanging out with like, I'm meeting Eric Conover and Sam Shepard for the first time, which is really exciting to me. Mm -hmm. But I like didn't care who they were. I didn't even care about like our thing, like our big fight. I was like, who cares? And I skated and I think that, yeah, maybe that confidence exuded. You're just with, being yourself. Oh, I just felt so, yeah, I just felt so in my element. That's when, I don't know. That's I mean, when I was like, ooh, hi. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so <laughs> you confident you cute yeah yeah, yeah I totally it worked out get that, that way so yeah. um so going back a little bit to sarah having a lot of guy friends <laughs> yeah. um and from what i've heard which was news to me from our conversation yesterday that in skate culture there's also a lot of girls that like to hang around the skate park they're you, they're doobie aren't like me very yeah, dissimilar. They're a different Sarah. type of female. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. yeah, I mean, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, and something I really wanted to bring up on this podcast that we haven't got, gotten to talk about a lot too much yet is the whole idea of jealousy. And it's funny when Chris and I were originally thinking of talking about this, we were going to go down the route of, you know, jealousy in terms of one person, you know, um, having more success than another, getting a job that the other one didn't get, you know, financially, um, you know, making more money than the other person. And so, but then you brought up something different based on, you know, the whole realm that you're in and, you know, how has that affected your relationship? We could definitely talk about both. Well, the, yeah. The jealousy, yeah, talk about both. The jealousy of the you know, guy girl hanging out with another guy girl thing. That's the jealousy that I was more familiar with. And then Sarah was the first time that I was more introduced to the jealousy of the business side. And you guys yeah. have been in that for so long that I feel like you may have always kind of felt that a little bit. But yeah, I mean, for me, it was brand new. I was like, what? why do I feel jealous that she's like working with this dude? And I'm like, oh, because I want to work with that dude. Yeah. Not because it's a dude. And yeah, that was that was new to me. But I mean, we've had a little bit of each, but I feel like we definitely haven't had it that bad in the sense of like, 
why are you spending time with that guy, blah, 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 or why are you spending time with that girl? I don't think we've had that jealousy I that mean, much. the irony of it, the true irony of it, Jonathan, is <laughs> um, because, you know, it is different worlds. So you have to take in context of everything. Um, but beca- because you are in a male-dominated space, I honestly probably would be more jealous if a girl came in because I would immediately like question her intentions. But I feel like it's very clear in the skate world. Um, Like Haley Isaac, she's just like a Mm -hmm. sick skater who's a skater. She's not trying to get some, (laughs) you know? And so I feel like you can, uh, because that's what we were talking about yesterday too. As women, you have to be like open to if another woman can advance in her field by like, hanging out with your boyfriend or husband or whoever, you don't want to be a roadblock to that because no. that's so dumb. Um, but yeah, it's bless you. God bless. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully it was easier for you to have the context since vlogs before I was always hanging out with dudes and that's been my entire life. And, but I think something you had to learn though is like that I can take care of myself. Like, mm-hmm. I am fully aware that guys can be slimy or they can have other intentions. Mm -hmm. But I think what you had to get used to is like that when that comes up, I have the experience. I know that's like awesome. Been fun working with you, hanging out with you. We have to part ways, you know, Mm -hmm. like I've, yeah, that, experience that. that was the hardest thing for me. The the whole thing with her hanging out with guys nonstop. Obviously I did. I'm not going to come into her world and be like, you know what? Now that I'm here, no more. Do I like no part of me cared even in the slightest bit. But I do feel somewhat entitled for some reason to like. I'm like I can meet a guy. I can immediately tell if he's slimy, and I'm just like, oh, that dude sucks. Like, trust me, you don't want to work yeah. with him. That's how I get. Like, I'm like, oh, you don't want to work with that dude. He's he's such a and I'm like gross dude. I can take care of myself. I right. under but I understand that like also when you do life with another human, you st- you still have to take in their feelings. It's not. It's like still a, valid. Yeah, exactly. It's not like a black and white thing. So I think it's just learning with every. Everything that um, comes up is just communication. We've learned to like really talk things out. I think at the beginning of our relationship, you had so many walls up. It took me so long to get in to like there that I was like, oh, no other guy. It's going to take him weeks to get in before Lizzie even opens up. So like number one, military family, like she can handle herself. Yeah. I know that just like based on like the relationships and the people I met in her family who are all super nice. But again, they're military. They mean business. They know what's up. And then I just know that Lizzie can handle herself in any of those situations and she knows to speak up or she knows to handle it. And she doesn't need me at all. So like f- from my perspective, I have never felt jealous of like another guy. Like literally we could be at a club and a guy will go up to her and like start flirting with her. And I like laugh. I'm like, this is gonna be hilarious. No, I like, I sit there and keep drinking like a beer and I'll be like, I can't wait to watch this guy get shut down so bad. Yeah, but sometimes you don't even know that's what's happening. You come up and you're like, who's your new friend? (laughs) But Chris is so cute sometimes. He's so naive. Yeah, does the podcast know of Chris's just niceness and little boy nature? Yeah, Yeah, I mean, you should talk about that. So here's here's a little insight into Chris's and my relationship. Um, I've also, I've never really been a jealous person because if, you know, if they do cheat on me, if something happens, then that's it. Yeah. And there's no point in me worrying about it and wasting my time. Right. Then that's just, you know, a problem I'll deal with when that comes up. So Chris is so adorable in that <laughs> he's so nice to people and he's so complimentary. And Chris is so he's so nice to to women like like here's one story. He uh was complimenting this uh server at a restaurant we were at. This was in university, and he just wants to make people happy. So he's like Oh, hot. Like, so nice to meet you. I'm Chris. You know what? I love your earrings. You look great today. And that's just Chris being nice. And so we're sitting with a bunch of our friends. And then um, one of our guy friends leans over to me and just goes, you know, that girl thinks Chris is hitting on her, right? And I was like, yeah, I know. But the thing is, Chris doesn't know that. So it's really more funny to me than anything watching this play out because she's she's like so flattered and like Chris is cute. So she's, she's like, oh, this cute shot. guy. Like, where's his number? Why yeah. His and she's going to be like, why didn't he ask? You know, what's the worst part is I remember I can't remember. She was like, oh, yeah, I made them myself. And I was like, you're an artist. 
<laughs> and I was like, that's amazing. Show me your other work. And then she showed me her Instagram page. I was like, this is great. You should be pursuing this. <laughs> and then, and I get just so, but this is, I, I'm like that. I ask people about what they're passionate and excited, male, female, whoever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, in the same way that a female can be career driven and look at every relationship with a man or a woman, regardless, as a business relationship without anything extra, equally, men should be able to, if that is them, be able to just fearlessly be themselves and yeah. you know and i think that's with a relationship it's like oh you have to communicate to know that's how he is 100 percent. you know so you don't get defensive or whatever um but then once that's that then it's just oh that's chris that's chris so exactly funny. and it's it's something that you can celebrate and enjoy well and we're probably we communicate we communicate we talk about pretty much everything and because i'm not really a jealous person i'm okay you know, I'm, I'm not blind. I can see that someone's really pretty or I know that someone's really talented. And, you know, if you're hanging out with a girl, for example, who's like in our niche, who's an amazing photographer, like I'm jealous in the sense that like, I want to be her cause she's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not jealous thinking she's going to steal my man. Yeah. I just think she's awesome. Yeah. So then I'm jealous that you're hanging out with her cause I want to hang out with her. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where my jealousy comes in too. That's exactly yeah. what happens. Yeah. Cause I remember when, cause Sarah gets all these opportunities all the time to basically hang out with the people that like I've like idolized, but I'm too scared to tap into this world. So I, anyways, but right, right in I Culver city, yeah. the biggest one, the one that like hit me so hard and it's pretty embarrassing yeah, was basically she got to go to this thing and interview like a bunch of celebrities or whatever. And she got to interview Tim Ferriss. Which is him. Mm. Which is like my Yeah. Dad. Like he was so obsessed. And like, I and upset I upset too. And yeah. I was yeah. very upset and I didn't know how to express it because I was and like, I well, clearly I shouldn't. Upset about. I was like, are uh, you upset that I got a brand deal? Because you, you don't want to make her feel bad. Yeah, yeah. especially. Yeah. And it's I not you want her to have all of the success, but you're just disappointed that like you didn't maybe get to do it first. Totally. 100%. And it's 100 percent silly to be like, that sucks that you got to work that you get to interview Tim Ferriss. That's and, but like I remember just being like, I'm I'm a like a huge fan. How have I? And then I just get down to myself where I'm like, dude. How bad do you suck to where you can't even mm -hmm. be in a position to do what she gets to do that she didn't even care about doing or whatever? And it's just because she was so good at her craft and her art. And I had to like figure that out too. Or it's like, no, I mean, like, she, this is going to happen all the time where you're going to have these opportunities. And, and to me, that was the biggest thing to adjust to. And we probably had like, probably like five or, of our like biggest arguments are probably something along this line of being yeah. like, yeah. And they're not even arguments, it's just me being lame or insecure yeah. and just being uh, yeah. well you know what's funny is that like I'll still talk to Chris about it and because he's still my partner and my fiance but I'll kind of preface it with like this isn't your fault but I want you to know this is how I feel because like I can't go around just pretending that I don't feel that way mm -hmm. so for us I feel like if I preface it with that then it's okay yeah. but I just want to be transparent about it otherwise like I don't want to harbor resentment yeah well and that's what we had to learn too is just like even if we're going to have the most stressful three hour conversation and even if like tears are involved, blah, 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 it's always worth talking it out. I yeah. Feel like. It's an exercise. Yeah. You need to get through it. It's, it's funny because it's hard to separate it. I mean, for, I mean, the biggest question and we answered this in the first podcast is everyone's like, well, how does that work? You guys work together. You live together. You own property together and blah, 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 all these things. Yeah. And it's hard to separate like the Chris Howe brand with Chris Howe, the person sometimes too, and vice versa, Lizzie, the brand and Lizzie as a person. And like sometimes literally the, the personal sides are bitching about the brand sides. Yeah. And that's really hard to separate those things sometimes. So again, and I think we talked about this yesterday, certain conversations you've just learned, you're like, cool, that's the one conversation we're not going to talk about because you know, it's so triggering. We know that it's difficult to sometimes get through. So maybe we don't have to say certain elements in that sentence that might really just like set it off and that's okay money too. Yeah. Money is a really sensitive conversation. Yeah. yeah. He, he was raised way differently and also realizing like how you were raised, how your family treated money, um, was just so different. So like learning how to navigate that too, I think is like, a, a process those went hand in hand though it was kind of like she would be like oh i have this brand deal oh this is so cool because i get to make this much money from this brand deal I was, mm. I was so, and especially you know well, the kind of the kind of like well yeah and the yeah, realization you know yesterday i was like oh genie my mom is basically how i learned 
how to like navigate a like loving relationship with someone. So she gets proud of me, especially with my dad, I think, especially with my dad. The only way that I feel like I can make him proud is kind of sad. He's not going to listen to this, hopefully. Um, the only way I feel like I can make him proud is to prove that I either got good grades or I can make money. 100%. And that was the only that way. That is how you win your father's love. Exactly, in my right? Too. Right? But at the same time, we're like super waspy. We don't really talk about money. Yeah. Well, and because so I how had to do learn I that. prove yeah. my worth? Exactly. And <laughs> without so, without talking about it. Because you have to adjust. It's almost, it's almost this weird dynamic where you have to realize that your partner isn't going to respond to things the same way as your parents. Cause it's just, it's different people. It's a different dynamic, yeah. but usually that's kind of like what you grow up thinking. Uh, I know it's weird that I'm comparing. No, it is to a romantic relationship, learn, but it's how you learn how to okay. receive. What? <laughs> that's not true. I'm Sarah sorry. walks out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Bye Sarah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, so money is the thing that we definitely don't talk about. Those other things we have to talk through, like how you were saying, like the fact that she gets to work with this guy. We don't talk guy. about money. At, well, I think I said to you at one point, I was like, just don't say it. <laughs> and he was like, but why? And I was like, don't say what money thing? money because right. he'll be like, I got made, paid uh, this much or they're going to pay me this much. Do you think that's OK? And I'm like, are you really having this conversation with me right now? Mm. Yeah. Especially a year ago when I was like just starting, yeah. like just the, the hurt. <laughs> well, and I was guys, like, so just don't, don't yeah. mention it. You tell me you're doing it. I have a good idea. It's fine. But when like we're trying to gauge what to charge, like if we're working with the same client or the same brand or whatever, then I'll ask you, I'll be like, okay, what did you get for this? Cause now I need to figure out how much I'm going to come in with. And then I mean, it's you guys okay. You have to talk money with the, like the agency you run though, like the production. I mean, that yeah, you have to learn that to we have to manage. And then this year more than ever, especially because we're engaged you and we had to home. buy the home. It was like, it was uncomfortable for me <laughs> because I still don't, I, I show you just enough probably that, okay. that you need to see okay. and tell you just enough. Yeah. I don't even think I know what your personal bank account looks like yeah. personally. Oh my God. What do you guys think of prenups? Um, we're in, we're in. You, you're going to get a prenup? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So for us, yeah. like we, um, that's just how always, we are. Yeah, and I've always been scared to ask, but I feel like it's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, every, every <laughs> relationship's like, different. Like yeah. we know of certain couples that they're like, oh, what's mine is hers and what's hers is mine. Right. Um, both of our families are raised very similarly. And I came from a family where like just, um, even if they are listening, like one person in our family, like kind of like a bit disconnected screwed over someone else in our family yeah. so bad that mm -hmm. i think that's just ruined everything yeah. and it's like cool because well, i i think that's my intention is always forever especially with marriage mm -hmm. but i'm in the camp where it's like if you choose to leave and you break my heart I don't want to suffer more consequences from that. There's so oh, many like, reasons why something couldn't but, work out yeah, that we can't even is, foresee necessarily. Yeah. And also there's so much divorce in my family, yeah. unfortunately. Um, and so everyone, even when we were just buying this condo, everyone mm -hmm. was like, my sister was like, so this is how you're doing it, right? This is what you're saying. You're not, you know, splitting things, sharing things. She wanted to make sure it was super clean. Interesting. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so they're very, um, my whole family's, again, very guarded. And so mm -hmm. that's why even in approaching our relationship, um, and I I had a, just broken up with my ex like a month before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was super, a super guarded. A month before I met Chris gotcha. and we started dating. So, and that's just how I am, like even with people, which is yeah. kind of like a lot of people are really, you know, um, they, they want everyone to be good when they first meet them. Right. You know what I mean? They just assume that you're a good person right. and all that good stuff. But then I, on the other hand, I assume that like, you're probably going to screw me over. Oh my God. <laughs> well, cause I first, think, <laughs> I think that, uh, making sure things are on lockdown and, and with stuff or maybe separated. I think that's also a freedom to go all in at the same time yeah. to where you can, um, cause that's what I see it as. Like, I want to build a future with you. I want to build not just a family, a life, but like a business too. And like, I want to do that, you know, it's saying like balls to the wall, just like <laughs> full in. Mm -hmm. Um, but in order to go all in, that leaves you in a very vulnerable state. Yeah. So to also be prepared, I feel like is important because we've seen our parents, we've seen our, you know, we've seen the track record of yeah. like the last generation. Um, 
and you would think that they're the ones who, you know, want to keep marriage like this uh, big thing, but some, it just doesn't seem like they treat it like that. So I feel like, I don't yeah. know, maybe the next generation will be more pra- cool. practical, <laughs> yeah. cool. Um, There's also a lot more knowledge out there too. Like we can tap in in this generation to a lot more like this podcast as an example and you get to hear different opinions and viewpoints Mm -hmm. versus just like a very isolated, maybe like just your community or just your family. Because people don't realize, yeah, I watched this video where it was, um, it was really interesting. It was divorce lawyers giving marriage advice and it was basically like- Dope title. Yeah, I know. It was (laughs) such a good title. Click. Um, And they were saying, they were like, you don't realize a merit getting married to someone is the most binding legal contract you will ever sign in your entire life. Yeah. In your entire life. And then that's something that people kind of like just nonchalantly go towards, yep. which is shocking, right? It's a huge decision. Yeah. That's why it took six and a half years. <laughs> well, there's been now we're getting into the fundamentals of like what is love, what is marriage what really? Is love? And you don't hurt me. If like my perspective is like love is one thing and it is important to love whoever you're marrying, but to like you can love someone and, you know, not be able to marry them. Mm -hmm. I I still think they're a little bit separate because Mm -hmm. marriage is is such like a partnership Mm -hmm. and it's a long time commitment to work together. You're going to, you know co-own a home you're going to raise children together those are some of like the hardest things that you'll ever have to do emotionally and financially in your life Mm -hmm. and so you have to know that you can work together not necessarily just that you love each other like you probably you two are so unbelievably practical about that i mean you really really (laughs) tested it before yeah well and also because you you know you want to know going forward that you're on the same page where it's like i hope we're gooey ooey in love with each other when we're 60 years old but even Mm -hmm. if we aren't like that doesn't mean that we part ways. I mean, hopefully we're not miserable, mm-hmm. but it's but like, like if we raise a family together, it's like we're a unit, build businesses yeah. together, yep. and, you know, live yeah. life together. My perspective is like you can, a lot of people say, you know, when they're having trouble in their relationship, they're like, but I love him or but I love her. And for me, I'm like, you, yeah, you probably do, but that still doesn't make it, that doesn't make that relationship make sense. Right you can love someone and still have trouble getting along with them. Like to me, they're still different. There's like being a friend and really, you know, being getting along and then you can still be in love with someone Mm -hmm. and not necessarily get along with them that well. That's like my perspective. Well, yeah, the the romanticism and love doesn't really mean much to me. It's all the practicality of our relationship. That means more Yeah, like every day us proving that we can just, coexist in so many different ways and also inspire and benefit each other in like real ways, not just like, oh my God, I'm so glad I have someone here that loves me, blah, 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 which is really nice. Yeah. But but we literally, we're we're growing in so many different ways that we've always wanted to grow and being with each other is helping that whole momentum. That's like, to me, when, when I see all the practicality, I'm like, that's right. Sometimes our relationship is so practical that we have to remind ourselves that we're in a relationship. It's so weird. Like we would, we, even in New York, we were here and then we had like a full day we were working. I can't remember what we were doing. Oh, NAB. And Lizzie looked at me and she goes, we're, we're engaged. And like looked at me and gave me a kiss. And we, and I like both of us just like tuned out for a second that we were like a couple. It was weird. And, but it, like, that's also necessary. I think for both of us, we're both very cuddly. We're both like that. And if the day doesn't have that too, it feels off. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we'll just get so in the mode of like, yeah, we're, you have to do this deal. I'm here to support you. I'm here to make sure it all goes well. Then we're going to do this. Then you're going to meet that person. Then you have to get your video up and this and that. And like, did you check your email? Like, how's everything going with the business? And then at some point during the day, you're like, Oh, I love you. Yeah. (laughs) We could hug like we can. Yeah. And it's it. And people ask like, how do you do both? And like, literally that's how sometimes you just forget you get so in one or the other. Right. So even though we do work in the same field, I would say that we're still pretty separated from like we don't work together in that capacity at all. We mm-hmm. have collaborated while we were dating, which is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Like, let's think of a concept to do together yeah. to literally benefit each other's channels and stuff. But I mean, I, I've always been like, oh, that would be exciting for me and you to pursue something and like work on something together. But it does scare me for that reason. It yeah. scares me to I don't know. I don't think we we don't put pressure on each other either for like helping out with videos um you know we have like other friends help us or we you know I have an employee now um because 
we're always so busy that I remember in the beginning, um, I mean, we help each other out, but I remember in the beginning, it did seem like it started to be a stressor because being a YouTuber is like a full-time job. It is, 100%. And, and we were able, because we both had that job, we were able to understand like, oh, this is asking too much of you to like help out with this or that and vice versa. So I feel like, but we should probably like make some videos with each other at some point. That and, yeah, because it's fun. I mean, I feel yeah, like we could genuinely create something pretty cool together too. But we also have different sort of business. Uh, like I'm, I'm willing to lose everything every like five minutes. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, I've, I've, even though I've worked five years for all this money, I'm willing to lose it tomorrow to try something that would be fun and exciting. Yeah, and yeah, Sarah's the opposite. I remember a huge stress of our relationship would be me being like, oh my god, I'm out of money. She'd be like, what? How? I'm like, I, I taught him. I taught him the uh, what's it called the ceiling roll or the or the. Oh, having like a minimum or whatever? Or a minimum. He he never in his life ever had like, my thing was like always minimum have 10K in the bank. So if shit hits the fan, I'll have something. You're okay. He would literally bring his bank account down to like $50. Just because, you know, because a skater boy, he grew up, I mean, you didn't grow up with that much money. So it, it was a very different dynamic. So I was like, yeah, there were there were moments in the relationship where we kind of had to sit down and like, okay, John, like. Well, I always say that Sarah pretty much taught me how to be a human. I, a lot of people say that same <laughs> yeah. thing where I was just like, I don't know how to function as one of these people things. And she was like, <laughs> oh, well, you have to. She was like, here's what money is. Here's the blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, interesting. Because like, yeah, because growing up too, when it I was like, that's so cool. Yeah, when it came to money, especially. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole idea, the idea of losing all of it instantly was like a funny thing my family did. Like, we thought it was funny. We'd always run out of money and we'd all laugh about it. Like, my dad would hit us up, like, hey, you guys have like 100 bucks. And we'd be like, yeah, we got you. Give him my last 100 bucks. Be like, oh, I'm negative 30 now. Dad, you mind giving me back 30 bucks? And he'd be like, oh, sure, I got it. So we always did that. So I've always just thought, like, well, money's not, especially like when I was doing YouTube and feeling super secure about getting a monthly check, yeah. doing brand deals once in a while. I like, just spend it. Yeah, I like wasn't scared at all to lose it because I'm like, I actually have something that's somewhat stable. I get paid more than once a month. Yeah. So we're good. But yeah, her mindset is like, yeah, but you can have four things fuck up in life right after you spend all your money. And yeah. then you're doomed. The point is to, uh, what's the saying to, just save when times are good so that when times yep. are bad, you'll be fine, you know? It is a good reminder. It's easy to like, just be like, cool, well, I wanted to spend it because it feels good. Yeah. Right. Um, just coming back because we're about to approach an hour. That's kind of like where we're, we hit. I know, guys. That was nice. Was nice. Um, I have, do you, well, I was going to ask the question um, just because we were chatting a little bit about collaboration here. Will we marry you? <laughs> yes. I do, I will, yeah. <laughs> I do, I will, yeah. <laughs> um, so my, my last question for you, and, and, and maybe Lizzie might have one last one, but maybe let's just drive on this for a little bit. Um, you guys just recently worked on a project together where like you were right. both brought on. What was that experience like? What What's your opinion on that? Um, how did it go? It was fun. Well, it was, it was good. <laughs> it was good. Next. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, talk about this right now. <laughs> relationshipy wise, really, it went really well. It was really easy. Uh, it was also easy to have someone who was like a partner in crime in that mm -hmm. because there would be moments that would be stressful for either of us, but we could easily relate on it because every time, I mean, it was like, it was Basically, a, the we thought that it was going to be very fly on the wall documentary esque. We just go and be our YouTube personality selves, fun stuff Turn more into like acting. So it was good that we had each other there because John does not respond well to like orders. So by the fifth <laughs> time that the production company, like that. <laughs> by the, the fifth time the production company, people were like, Hey John, can you just do that? Say that one more time. And take the box out this way. I mean, he would just, I could just tell. He would like start holding tensing it back. up. He's like, you take it out of the box. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do it live. Well, yeah, well, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I actually, it was funny because I always think like, look at these prima donnas getting all mad like while they're filming. I fully got like that like 10 times where I would start screaming. We've I'd done like, that once. Yeah. yeah. That. Oh, really? <laughs> Lizzie, ha well, we were literally, I can relate so hard to this. I'm not going to go into the story of it, but Lizzie has this one thing that she'll do to me when I'm like speaking up or like I I'm just about to explode, which is very difficult. I get there like once or twice a year and she just puts her hand on my leg and she just looks at me and she's like, 
And, and, I, and it says everything. She just gives like a small nod. And it's like, that's everything. And literally my heart's just like, okay, chill for a second. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. one of those moments where I just, I would, yeah, definitely kind of like grab you and be like, you know what, guys? I can do it. Let me, let me do this. That, that had probably happened two times where they'd ask me to do a line over and over. And after like three or four times, I would just be like, I'm not doing it, you know, or whatever. And it's like, and it's fully not their fault because they're just, you know, and they were so nice. That's the funny part is like everyone there was so cool and so nice that there's obviously such a huge guilt when I would get mad and upset, but it's just getting direction, period. It's and like we so just feel like we, it wasn't entirely what we signed up for. Yeah. That was the, the only thing. So that it was, was what nice. happened to us. Actually. Yeah, yeah. It was very nice for us to have each other there um, to be able to like, you know, and it goes back to even if, we don't have good airplane seats. And if he ends up in the middle seat, he will, I could just tell like instant, he will get so, if they keep it's, touching me, yeah. oh my God, it's like, <laughs> and so literally before I've had to be like, John, get up right now. You're sitting where I'm sitting. I will sit in the middle seat to where it gets uncomfortable for everyone because he just starts like making faces and like moving all crazy. And I'm just like, all right. So yeah. It's true. I mean, everyone can tell. The guy next to me, too, is just like, they can tell what I'm doing, but they have no idea why. And I'm like, it's because your arm is leaning against my shoulder. What are you? Anyways, but yeah. yeah. So Sarah's, Sarah's got my back. But yeah, doing the thing together with Sarah was exponentially better because Sarah was there. Awesome. I mean, it made, awesome. it, it made everything awesome. That's the reason I was That's like, oh, we can do stuff together. When it, when it became you and me and not just me and a random influencer person, I was like, oh, hell yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah. So I think on that note, this would be a great place to end it. Guys, I didn't want that to end. I feel like we could have just kept talking. Part, that was, part two. We'll, we'll part two. We'll part two part one day, it. and we'll like we'll get video. At we'll have some cottage. fun. They, oh please! They invited. They invited us. To yeah. Take me there right now. It's lying, nice and quiet there. No, there was no lie. Yeah, that was uh, definitely one of the easiest ones we've ever done. We could could have kept that going for a while. Um, so on that note, uh, for both of you, where can we find your stuff? Um, yeah, tell tell the world. I would say YouTube and Instagram, John Hill, J O H N H I L L. YouTube, Instagram. You can just Google Sarah Peachy and you'll find me. Love it. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys very much for listening to the podcast. If you guys can leave a review, that means the world to us. It means that more people will get to hear these conversations and uh, we'll get to have more guests on the show. So we love you all. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.